And good morning, everybody. And it is a beautiful sunny day here at the Macaninas track in Guarda, Portugal. We did have some rain overnight, so we are slightly bit delayed in the start. The track crew and volunteers got out there and swept the track clean. The sun out is out, so it's drying up. The wind is starting to kick up, so it will dry faster. We are, we, the forecast looks absolutely beautiful for the rest of the day. When we got here, it was very foggy, very damp, uh, but they have dried the track. We have a few more racers come to run Nitro with us today. We have more people from the around, surrounding village coming to watch some racing today. It's the celebration also today of the 71st anniversary of this club. Not of the RC facility, but of the actual club. So we've got three finals to do today for the e-buggy class. Obviously, there'll be some nitro mixed in between. I'll be here with you guys all morning to talk RC. Can JC3 turn his TQ into a win and become the e-buggy world cup that would be a great uh stat for him to have obviously he'd be looking to get the actual world championship in 2025 but we're here to finish off the e-buggy world cup here in guarda portugal i want to say a big thank you to all the the portuguese federation for having us here the club here as well and a big shout out to the sponsors that make this all possible they are rudog eeu s works hot race tires hobby bing and x-ray we are here working in conjunction with the Portuguese Federation and RC Racing TV. So you can watch all the coverage on the RC Racing TV Facebook and YouTube page. Don't forget to go over there, hit the like sub notification button, help them get to that 100,000 sub mark. Also, if you wish to support them a little bit further, you can become a member and you get early access to such great content as their RC autopsy series that they've done. Also, if you want to go check out the thoughts of some of the drivers from this past weekend, we did get out and get a few interviews. And James did an excellent job of editing it up. And you can get their thoughts on e-buggy, uh, the Europeans going over to America to race and dominating and all that good stuff. It's a nice uh, 10 to 11 minute clip. I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, go over there, hit, take that, share it to your Facebook groups. And I will be talking to you guys all day. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget to uh, hit that like, uh, that follow button on Facebook as well. If you want some RC content, check out their YouTube page, and they have over 15 years of it there to give to you guys. All right, there we see our first, we're, we're going off for a 10 minute practice to also dry off the track a little bit. There you can see uh, there's an excellent, beautiful facility here. There's Paolo, our camera guy. There's our there's David Todd, Carlos Fonseca. Oh, we have a new driver that showed up. Okay, I don't know who he is. Thomas Musso, JC3, and the young man from Israel, Harold Sandorf. I was talking to him yesterday. Hello, Alex. Good morning. Hello from New Jersey. It's 5.47 a.m. Yep, it's, it's just about, you're five hours behind. I hope everything's well there in New Jersey. I know you guys had an earthquake a few days ago. Very unusual to hear of earthquakes in New Jersey, so I hope all is well, Kevin. Uh, we do thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. Please share this. We should see some good action from JC3, Joel Figueredo, Ricardo Montero, David Todd, and Thomas Musso. And one of these guys will go home the inaugural World Cup winner of eBuggy. So we have a lot of things to talk about. I was talking to one of the EFRA officials yesterday. He was explaining to me how this works and how they might change in the future. So basically, clubs, back in the day, clubs were, if my required clubs to have a World Cup prior to entering, uh, prior to having a new class uh, for a World Championship, to make sure that the, the club or the, or the actual federation could handle it. But as time has gone on, uh, there's thoughts of maybe changing that rule, so it cuts down on costs for manufacturers. They don't have to send their drivers twice to the same place. And of course, e-buggy is, is a rapidly growing, if not the most popular class in the world in many areas. So it's only natural that we do have a world championship for it. And there's even some talk of maybe having e truggy I was told. So they're just trying to get some rules cleared up. And we might see e-buggy and e truggy next year at, in Barcelos at the IBC track, at the B-buggy arena, which will host the actual worlds. So we are looking forward to seeing how that develops. E-Truggy, a, a, a fast-growing 
a fast growing segment of RC. What's up, Erdu? Why is the artificial grass in that corner? That's actually where the loop goes. So that's where the lap corner goes. And they just put carpet over it so it doesn't get torn up. Bonjour, Vincent Verdun. Hello from France. Thank you for tuning in. I know eBug is, uh, eBug and eTrug is pretty big there in France. I know you guys like it. Bob Thomas, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Good morning to you. Hope everything's well. Good morning to all of you guys. As these guys go out and get some practice, it's still a little bit chilly out here, but we got the sun out. The breeze is starting to come up. We have the beautiful picturesque views of the mountains. We see some windmills up there. It's absolutely beautiful here in Guarda, Portugal. I, I think the more I come to Portugal, the more time I spend there, the more I like it. And the, the food is great. The atmosphere is awesome. It's still a little bit crazy how I like it. And we are having a good time. Yes, Alex, I know you like pizza and big roosters. That's an inside joke. So these drivers will go out and get some warm up, uh, get some practice, try to dry the track off. It was, it's been a very slippery track when it's been dry. So we've seen a lot of four wheel drifts. So they'll have a little bit of traction now. And it's a beautiful facility here. Up in the, we're at about, I think about just under a thousand meters of uh, elevation. Good morning, X, X Tech 101. How are you this morning? Hope everything's all right there in Sweden. Not too cold for you. I saw you was watching a little bit of the PMB. I was actually up to about two last night watching some of the PMB and writing some reports. Because my good buddy, Max Mort, fell asleep. And Vincent is having some eclairs, croissants, wine, and champagne. Awesome way to start your morning. So <clears throat> we are going to be bringing coverage. I'm not sure if we're going to cover the all the nitro racing as well, but definitely the three finals here at the e-buggy rock up unfortunately a very low turnout for the race this this year uh, as truly the world cup has it's not a world championship but i do expect and we do expect that we to see all the top manufacturers sending their top drivers here in 2005 next september i think the race will be for the actual world cup so it should be good we're looking forward to it and the B Buggy Arena will put on a very good job, as they always do. A uh, very hardworking facility there. Hardworking guys there. And it is doing very good. We have cold air and snow. I heard snow was falling here Friday. I heard all about it. Lots of snow. You guys got some. Yeah, you know what? They were telling me that this here, this actual track, two weeks ago and all around the surrounding area was white with snow as well. They told me. So. And you can see on the, as we was coming on the peaks of the mountains, they had snow on there. They do some skiing and, and whatnot. And there you see David Todd. I think that's David Todd or JC3. Going to be hard to see. Yeah, that's Todd, number two in that Mugen car. So the track drying out very fast. It's a very granular, sandy type of uh, material out there. They usually do glue this track, but did not have the chance to do it this weekend. They did get a new layout put in by Escalda Miguelo, the track builder from Spain. He's becoming world renowned for his track builds. I hope one day to, you make it to Shaw's. Me too, man. I've heard a lot about Shaw's. I've probably been across it as I've traveled through Oklahoma uh, on my travels, but never had a chance to get there. I know Lance was there earlier this year, or was it last year? Maybe? Last summer. Oh, I can't remember. And thoroughly enjoyed his time there at the truck nationals that you guys had. I heard nothing but great things about Shaw's and I hope to get there one day. Maybe uh, maybe I'll get over there with Lance when he goes or maybe we get Danny up there to do uh, the Elite RC guys up there to do some stuff for you guys. We'll see. But thank you for tuning in, Bob. And uh, racing smart are just about to, I mean, it's been hot and heavy for the U.S. It seems like racing never stops in the U.S., but you guys have, uh, I guess, with the weather getting better, we, ex we should expect a lot of racing coming up from the Texas, Oklahoma area for the RC Pro Series. So, X-Tech says, I'm fine. Weather is somewhat mixed. Went to the track yesterday and it went fine I, I, till I broke my carbon rear shock tower. The tower will get more money now as I need more parts for the bug. I mean, that's how it goes, X-Tech. You go, we break, we fix again. And uh, that's how these hobby shops like Latera, who's actually run by two great guys that I actually had the pleasure of meeting and hanging out with 
at the 2002 Worlds in Redavon. Kim, and I do not recall the other gentleman's name. So, and uh, they are big supporters of the No Name RC podcast. <clears throat> oh man, what's up with the HB Exodus, says Bob Thomas. Well, Bob, uh, I'll tell you what, if you go listen to show number 279 that Max and I dropped earlier this week, I think it was, we talk all about that, break down some information that we have and look at it. I don't think that they're going to disappear as a brand, but definitely getting parts and kits has been an issue for them. And we are seeing, we are seeing an exodus of the drivers. So we shall see. David Olsen is there at uh, HB doing pretty, with HB doing pretty good. I think he made it to the A final in Truggy. Martin is the other guy out there, yes. Yeah, we, they were both staying at the hotel that we were staying at in, in Redavon. And actually, Phil was staying there too from Neobug. I got to meet him for the first time. Need to get him on the podcast as well. And speaking of Phil, I'm looking right at a neobuggy.net sticker right in front of me. So this Phil was in this very spot uh, 14 years ago when they had the Afro European Championships at this race. And I was actually looking at some pictures of him. Uh, oh, Figueredo getting a big one. I think he broke his car. Did he break his car? Ooh, those cars, they are going to have a lot of work to do as these cars are muddy, 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 muddy. Why did Cole go Mugen and not SRX? I don't think he's signed with Mugen, Bob. I think he's just running it independently. And uh, I think he's just trying out some cars. I will say this. Uh, we've been doing some uh, results on the No Name RC podcast from the uh, some written reports, Max and I, from the, from the PMB. And we were asked to change his chassis manufacturer to Mugen. But that does not mean that he's actually driving for me. So, <clears throat> time will tell what goes on with Cole Ogden. We do know he has the talent. We know he can do well. But let's see what happens uh, in the future for the beast of the East, as I call him, or the people's champ as he's known around the world to others. As these drivers get out there and get their practice one but go check it out Bob Thomas show 279 uh, look up look out for RC TMZ on the timestamps if you don't want to listen to do the whole podcast and uh, we break it all down and our thoughts on it why couldn't we see Cole with an x-ray car they need a driver in the USA him and Ron Falk have been very good friends together and they make a very powerful team and I know for a fact when when uh, when the Ronafalk made the move to Mayako, Cole was very close to follow, but it didn't happen. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Bob. Uh, Hot Race are a very good brand of tires. They're very dominant here in Europe, and they're very good out on the outdoor tracks, as we saw Elliot Boots take the win at DNC, and Ronafalk was right behind him on that tire. <clears throat> but when it comes to these big Southeast indoor races in uh, that, like PMB and Wicked Weekend and all that, man, it is very hard to beat uh, J Concepts. They have the compounds and tread patterns and a plethora of them, and people use them you know those races even though they're not outdoors they do go through some temperature changes and the dirt there is very similar but brandon rose absolutely flying taking a tq and q1 and 11 and q2 yesterday and actually starting second behind the mayfield who is actually a tq of truggy and a pro buggy and there we see i believe that's jc3 somebody's car has got a crunchy diff out there i just heard them getting on the brakes and you heard that ominous sound of a crunchy diff somebody's gonna have some work to do but well done x-tech did you go to a, was you racing 10 scale or 8 scale uh, because latera has a does latera have an indoor carpet track i'm not sure i haven't i have to check out their facebook i have to actually get with those guys next week and uh we're, we're gonna do some work together so looking forward to that and there's jc3 who is your TQ 
TQ'd every round yesterday. He was the only driver to get in that 10 lap pace. Was talking to Litos, uh, Joao Figueredo, and he's trying to pick up the pace and catch up to uh, catch up to the Spaniard, JC3. Yes, Vincent. Uh, Thornhill is in Huto, Texas. Beautiful facility. I've never been there either. So maybe I need to get back. I've been to the only track I've been to in Texas is Indy. So maybe I need to get to another Texas tour. Go check out Indy. Go check out Mike's Thornhill and, and head up to Shaw's. Maybe get over to Amarillo. Check out their track as well. Oh, awesome. You was running the XB2 22 10 scale 200. I have to see what their indoor track looks like. I have, I've, I've probably seen it, but didn't realize it was theirs. There we see our race director, Pedro, who was out there sweeping off the puddles. I want to say a big kudos to all the volunteers that came out and swept the track off. It's always good to see there were racers out there as well. And uh, always great to see. Yesterday they had a live band here in that big black building. They had, so this is also a local club for the village around here. So people come here to watch football and, and whatnot as well. Is carpet racing big in Europe and Asia? Do you mean 10 scale racing, Bob? I think it's big worldwide. It's definitely big carpet and astroturf in, in Europe, especially in the UK. And we're starting to see a lot more carpet racing popping up in the USA, which, and I mean, you talk to a, a driver like Mayfield, he will tell you that he actually prefers running 10 scale on carpet. He told me that, and he says, carpet is the future, and we will see a lot of, uh, like they do in the UK, they do, a, and in Europe, they do a lot of semi-permanent tracks where you just roll out the carpet. Like, say you have this building right in front of us, this black building there, and you lay down a subfloor, you lay down, uh, if you do, if it's a semi-permanent track, you just roll out the astro or carpet, set up some light weight jumps. I remember going to Silverstone, they would use fire hose filled with gravel. That would be your track lanes. And you had a different, they had a, some scaffolding to make your rostrum, as they called it in the, U in the UK. And you had yourself a, uh, a, a track, a new track within an hour. So I definitely think that carpet is the future. And uh, one second. Carpet is the future of growing RC. I love carpet racing. I did some at the, I think the world's biggest carpet race, which is the Florida Carpet Championships in uh, October at Beachline RC Raceway in Cocoa, Florida. I got to run 21.5. It was awesome. Buenos dias, Julian Alonso, tuning in from Argentina. Como tu estas? Que parte de Argentina tu estas? Tu eres? What part of Argentina are you from, Julian? Are you in Buenos Aires? Are you up in Mendoza? Do you... I've been to Mendoza. Okay. Vincent says, I went to Thornhill in Scotland to practice golf, but no buggy track. Okay, so there's a Thornhill golf course in Scotland. Awesome, I did not know that. La Terra has a touring car track, so I'm at the moment racing indoor carpet buggy in Boris, about 50 minutes from me. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Looking to see what the Viking can do later on today at... PMB. He, uh, he was pretty fast. He made some mistakes that cost him a little bit. Uh, he's kind of starting in eighth. He's made all of the finals. So we'll see. Oh, you're from Patagonia. So you're from way down south. I actually met some guys when I was in Chile. And they are from very far down south as well. Near the Patagonia area of Chile, I guess. Or the other side. I'm not sure what it is. And they flew up to uh, come do a. They flew up to come do a invisible speed course and do a race with us up in Santiago in Cash. Vincent, I am from Bermuda. Yes, as in the Bermuda Triangle. It's a small island in the middle of the Atlantic. It's actually a British territory. So English is my first language, but I live uh, in the Dominican Republic. So, yeah, Bermuda, my original, my, my home. You might hear a slight accent. That's my Bermudian accent. As we heard, the nitro car is starting to get revved up. Are 4S batteries better priced in Asia and Europe? Not sure, Bob. Uh, I think they're about the same price. I'll be honest with you. Uh, as battery technology gets better, so I think we're going to see a lot of these high-priced batteries dropping down. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm not sure on the price. Maybe some of the Europeans can tune in 
uh, and let us know what the prices of these batteries are. Where do you race, Julian? Donde tu corre? I did my honeymoon in Punta Cana, amazing place. Yes, I was, uh, Punta Cana is about six hours drive from where I am. And uh, I, uh, I've been there twice. It's very touristy. I live up in a very big, I, mean, I live in a, on the north coast in the middle of the, of the island. It's also a very touristy area. Lots of expats or foreigners like myself lived in the area. People from Europe, Canada and America. So I like it up there. What's up? Hi, Alex and I are working on the 1st and 4th March for a few months. So I can make sure that I'm working with them on behalf of all other students. Okay, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Alex. The nitro has started. We might have to shut that window down. But please share this for us, guys. And um, also, don't forget to go over to the RC Racing TV YouTube channel. Check out the interview that uh, interviews that we done with these drivers. It's a great listen. And uh, don't forget to share it as well. Santo Domingo is actually where I fly into tomorrow, Bob. It's about three and a half hours drive north from my house. It's about 125, 135 mile trip. So it's pretty easy. You come out of the airport and then you, it's a highway that takes you straight north. And then you drive, that takes about an hour and a half, maybe two, and then you drive along the north coast for about another hour and a half, depending on traffic. Hey James, can we close that, please? If you're not, or are you gonna be? It's just really loud. Oh, somebody's car sounds like it has something slipping up there. I know this is the e-buggy World Cup, but they have made it to where some of the Portuguese racers come up and race, and uh, they have come out and raced. I think we have a full field, or at least five cars out there right now, more than that. I know, Bob, I love this song too, but it was coming in a little bit too loud. So it is, you can still hear it. as I'm just doing my sharing duties as well. Yep, we got a little bit of the nitro smell. Luckily, it's always a good smell first thing in the morning, Bob, because nitro is truly the glory, but it's all about e-buggy this weekend and a little bit of nitro. And I'm looking forward to the uh, actual world championships next year in Barcelos and getting the Americans over here to race on these awesome tracks that they have over here. We also get to see the Americans and everybody come to Redovan again, back to Spain for the Nitro World Championships after the unfortunate cancellation of the world in Brazil due to not able to get permits for the uh, race. So at the park they were at. Unfortunately, the Brazilians are very good friends of mine and we was working together to promote that and then I was shocked myself when I saw it on Facebook that the race was canceled, so very unfortunate. But we'll still be, the RC Racing TV crew will be at Redovan. They did an excellent job of bringing you the 2022 World Championships. I was fortunate enough to call that race alongside Nick Damon, and I will be there myself doing NNRC content uh, as well as commentary. And we're actually trying to get uh, Max is trying to get some time off of work and come in as well. And we're gonna do a lot of cool stuff. So we'll see how everything goes. But I'll definitely be there. NNRC content, then commentary, and then more NNRC content with 
uh, Maximus Mortimus. Yep, I was befuddled. I love it, Bob. That is going into my repertoire of funny words to use, like kerfuffle. Befuddled and kerfuffle. How does oh so I actually was talking to the Afro the Afro man of the, the Afro head uh, Carlos Gomez yesterday he sat next to me we had lunch and he said basically and I can see how it happened they Brazil had tried so the track is actually in a public park of sorts it's actually an, an old uh, it's also part of a club that is for tether planes so tether planes are basically an airplane that flies around on a string in a circle and the government didn't want to was very was dragging their feet in on the on the giving them a permit and it sounded like they basically wanted to get some funds in their pocket to have these permits and i think in the end they just it just was not possible and with five months to go they unfortunately had to to cancel it and how by ifmar rules it it, Faymar had another chance to submit some bids. They submitted the Speed Paradise track in Buenos Aires. That held the 2012 Worlds. I know Bolivia was also anxious to do it, and Mexico. But the rule stated if they could not find a, if F, if Ifmar could not agree on a one of the Faymar solutions, that the race automatically goes back to the Efra block, which is the European block. And then Afro automatically kind of gave it to Redavon. I kind of understand why they did. Redavon did an excellent job of holding the race back in 2022. It's not an easy task. It's not a cheap task, task either. It does cost a lot of money. And the Baudas have uh, the, one of the stipulations was that they had to have a completely new track built, not just a part. And the Baudas assured me when I messaged them that they will do a track change. They said the early part of the track uh, is going to be kept the same as the concrete whoop de doo section. So, Bob, the U.S. could not hold it because it's not their turn to hold it. But after they actually are going to hold it. They're going to hold it in 2026. The U.K. did not submit a bid for it, so it comes down to that as well. What tracks want to do it? I was told there were five different tracks that applied. Barcelos being one. Uh, Redavon, a track in Germany, the Ongaro Ring, and I'm not sure where else. But it's not just about the track, Bob, it's about the whole facility that can, that can handle it because a world is, is special, man. It's very different from normal, a normal race. And lots of things are required by the tracks in order to host this event. So the Redavon will do a good job. I think the top Americans are not too, I think they're more, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to see it go to Brazil, I've definitely seen a more positive uh, response to it going back to Redavon. The Americans and people that went before, they know where to go, they know how to get around, they know how the track will be. So I think it's a second shot for the USA guys to try and take a win. Uh, it's a second shot for the Europeans to defend their title as Angaro is the current champion. And it's a second shot for many. Will we see Davide Angaro go three? Will we see another epic race like we saw in 2022 with, between him and Angar uh, Ranafog? Can Ranafog win his second world? Will we see somebody completely new win a world? Will the Americans win their first world championship since 2010 when Cody King won it? Will we just see somebody out of the blue completely take the win? Um... So yeah, Bob, that is what happened with that. Uh, 
and he explained a few things to me. But it definitely stays where the USA will get it in 2026, which should be great. The last time they held a world was 10 years ago in 2016. And it's, it's looking like, uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but I, I've got some insight on to possibly who the tracks might be. What's up, Bob? So, Bob, I don't know. Uh, I haven't. So, this is supposed to be uh, the e-buggy World Cup, but they just introduced Nitro. I would say there is quite a lot of OS engines here, and mostly OS-based engines. I haven't really been around to look at the Nitro glass. A lot of them just came today. So, yeah, no different from America, I would say. The Portuguese guys will come out to race. We did have the International Buggy Challenge that I was at last week in Barcelos. And unfortunately, that got completely rained out. We did race in the rain a little bit, but it got rained out. And I actually love that race and love that facility. And it looks like they're going to move it back to May like they did last, uh, last year. And I'll be back next year, I'm told. I'm, I'm, I'm told I'm coming back to Portugal three times next year. One for the IBC, one for the Euros, which would be great. Now I've been to a Euros. And one for the uh, E-Buggy World Championship. I have to say a big thank you to the Figueredo family, Joao and his father Jose have been exceptional hosts and they are they have treated me well. They took me out to dinner last night and well man the food I I I I, I look I really like Portugal and the food here is amazing and it's beautiful, it's very cost effective here. Is e truck a thing over there? It's getting bigger, Bob. So we're seeing e truck get gaining popular in popularity in various locations around Europe to the point where they might even in include it in the worlds next year. So I'm all for that. I love e-truck. But we're going to have some regular truck bodies, I believe, not the uh, bruggy bodies. So Charlie Mack will be happy about that because he is a truggy period purist. I hope you guys do like everything that we're doing. I know that the Psycho Nitro Blast is about to start. Glenn Scott tuning in from Australia. Hello and good day, mate. Well, it's not day. It's actually 1127, depending what part of Australia you're in. Let us know what part of Australia you're in, Glenn. Yeah, it took a lot. What's up, Mike Cash? You're up early. It's like, what? Eight hours behind. Yeah, track is uh, is, is holding, up, holding up great. They'll have some traction today. Uh, the sun is out and they'll dry up. I'm pretty sure we'll have a dry track by today. Bob Thomas, your thoughts on the PMB track? Best layout I've seen in a long time. Kudos to Bobby Moore and the 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 track crew for what they're doing. So, 3.27 a.m. Well, you are in the city that never sleeps, Mike, so I can understand. Oh, you're from Queensland. Okay, what is your local track there in Queensland? Uh, it's going to make for some good racing, Bob. Good day from Israel. Hello, class. We, class RC, we have a young uh, Israeli here racing with us, Harold Sandorov. I was talking to him yesterday. Very nice young man. Uh, and he was telling me about the race scene there in Israel. I gave him some No Name RC podcast stickers to take home with him. He didn't even know about my podcast, but he became a... <laughs> I bet you did, Mike Cass. I bet you did. <laughs> so that means you're gonna be up, you're gonna get some sleep and watch PNB. I saw Cav having some good runs there for the sparkly sparkle. So that's good to see. Always good to see the goat doing well. But thank you guys for joining us. My name is Lefty the Great of the No Name RC Podcast, and I am your commentator for today. Those that are familiar with me. Uh, you've heard me commentate on races like RCGP, the World Championships, and uh, uh, various races in the America. And uh, good stuff. Oh, you raced Harold on Monday? Well, make sure you get, I gave him some stickers, and I gave him a few extra ones. Make sure you said, hey, I was talking to Lefty on the, on the stream, and he said I, he's got some stickers for me. So I'll give you a sheet of stickers. Uh, Bob Thomas, is Techno big over there? It's getting big. So... This year, Techno uh, made some moves, some decent moves into the European scene. They picked up uh, Jao Figueiredo, who was a long-time Kyosha driver, a 10-time national Portuguese champion and a very good racer, had a very good 2023. They also picked up the Parente brothers from Spain, Adrian and Danielle. I actually was talking, they were at the IBC last weekend, uh, so was the team manager for Techno, 
uh, Elias, and uh, we got to talking, and I will I do talk to Mac uh, as well when I get to races in America, and they are definitely making a push here in Europe. It's popular. It seems to be a very popular brand in France as well. So, so quite a few techno trucks, and sorry, techno cars, e buggies, and um, nitro buggies at the IBC. Yeah, Harold's a pretty good driver, Crass. I was watching him. He's very calm. He says he's traveled to Europe many times to race. Uh, I always love to meet new people, uh, people from different countries. Obviously, Cass, I've seen you in the chat before while we're calling races. So right now, we're just on a practice session for the Nitro guys that came this morning. And just having some fun. So it looks like no star from Figueiredo or Vitor Diaz. Harold. I actually took a picture of Harold. He had some shades on when I first got her. And I was like, wow, this looks like this kid is the doppelganger of Alexander Hagbard. So I messaged Hagbard's in uh, Canada at the moment. So I sent him a picture of Harold in his glasses. And I said, look, you got a doppelganger or a younger brother here. But very nice young man. Yeah, he, was, he was sitting off and talking with me for about half an hour yesterday evening after we finished racing. And it was a great chat with him. So. Nice young man. Very nice young man. So we got Australia, Israel, Vegas, Oklahoma in the chat. Always good to see. Good morning, everybody. Please share this out. We do have three e buggy finals. We will crown a World Cup champion. Right now, your TQ is the man from Spain, your current Nitro Buggy European champion. He is also a former. He's also a European e-buggy champion. I think he's won it twice. Uh, Juan Carlos Canas Carrasco, or JC3, as he's now called. Bullyard RC Club in Australia. We held the Bullyard Cup in January each year. I'm going to have to look that up on Facebook, if you guys got a Facebook group. I, uh, I have lots of friends in Australia and meeting new ones every day. That's another country I would love to get to. Love the Asian Buggy Championship that you guys have going on, going on with Scotty, and uh, they're going over to they're going over to Philippines here in two weeks. So that's oof. that's my bucket list list race, the Philippine Masters. When am I getting an RC10 B7? I have nowhere to race it, Bob. I don't have any carpet tracks uh, at home. So, unfortunately. I have just did a, the GOAT Joe Johnson. Yeah, some might say that. I actually done an interview with Joel about a month ago, and I'm going to release it on the No Name RC podcast here soon. I have an interview with Ty Tessman as well that I have to, re I have to release as well. So if you're not... Uh, if you haven't gone already or you don't know anything about the No Name RC podcast, it's probably one of the most popular podcasts in the world. We have about 279 episodes over the last five years. So we're very controversial. We have lots of great interviews. We push a lot of issues. And I see James is walking back with a coffee. Unfortunately, no pastries for me this morning. I guess there's no pastry. Join your club, Bullyard RC Club. Got it. I'll have a look at it when I get a chance. There, Glenn. And the sun is out. It's absolutely magnificent out here today. And James comes back bringing coffee. Fresh Portuguese coffee that will wake Lazarus. Well, thank you, James. You're a gentleman and a scholar. And a, and a juice. No new tarts. Yesterday? Okay, so no fresh tarts today. Yes, hopefully they bring some of those delicious Portuguese tarts. But I have a nice, delicious coffee in front of me. And that's what keeps me going. 
Yeah, so look out for that interview. I had a great chat with Joel Johnson the other day. And uh, got his thoughts. Learned some stuff about him. Another great uh, interview with him is, uh, oh man, Action RC podcast from Australia. He did a two-parter and it was a great chat with him. Not, uh, so I know Joel was an off-road guy and 10 scale. So I did read about him in the magazines, but I wasn't very, I mean, obviously I know he's, a legend, but you know my background morally comes from one eight scale racing, off road, so kind of focus on those legends right there. But all good, check it out. You know I'll have it up in a few weeks time. The No Name RC Podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Check us all out. Uh, don't forget to hit the sub, like, notification button on this excellent channel, the RC Racing TV channel. Had the pleasure of working with. RC Racing TV on many different occasions, RCGP Worlds, Hydrogen GP in uh, in Vegas last year, uh, virtual coverage as well. So, As you guys can see, there's an old green Mercedes pulling in here. Uh, as a lot of people will come today because this is the celebration of the of of the oh man what am I looking for the word I'm looking for of the 71st anniversary of this club so they had a party last night they have They're gonna have some festivities today, apparently. So good, good stuff. So we got six minutes and 46 seconds left in this practice session. And I'm not gonna lie, after hearing the whizzing sound of tires and, and, and electric motors, it's great to hear multiple nitro engines out there revving around. Let's see who'll be your top driver. I told Joao and those guys they should have bought their nitro cars too as well, so they can race. So they're giving them a practice session. I want to thank everybody that's joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. Our chat's been kind of dead. So, when you guys want to have a chat, let me know. I'm always here for a talk. Delicious coffee we have here. All 
right, it is turning into an absolutely gorgeous day here in Guarda. Makiana's track. Home of the 2010 EFRA World Championship. You know what? I need to find out who won that. Let's, uh, let's have a quiz. Let's do a quiz. Who was your 2010 EFRA European Champion at this track? I don't know who it was. <laughs> My fly sky controller. Noble jumped out of the case and started to watch this practice session. Ooh, I got a new one of them coming as well, and a new receiver. What's up, Magnus? How you doing? How's F1 going? I, uh, the guys were watching it earlier as well, so. I was up to two watching PMB, and then uh, Max was supposed to do write-ups. He woke up about five minutes before the pro nitro buggy and said, I'll, I'll try and sell for the nitro buggy, and he fell back asleep. He was be caught Max lacking, but he'll be back up writing his reports on PMB. If you guys can do me a favor there, go over to that Facebook page, the NNRC Facebook page, and share the write-ups that we're doing. We're doing some awesome graphics. Uh, my buddy Danny Paz and uh, Jacob Peterson from Race Time Entertainment been helping out with that. And of course, Live RC's doing good coverage, great coverage of it as well. That'll be the races to watch later on today. But right now you get to listen to Lefty the Great or the Great Disappointment as some of my friends call me. And while these guys practice, we can just talk random RC. Random RC gibberish, I guess. Or chit chat. You know I always love to talk about RC, so not a problem for me at all. As I'm also just trying to uh, manage my flight home. coffee when I got here. Um, I don't know, Magnus. I don't know if there's any Serpent drivers here this weekend. Not to my knowledge. I don't, I, a lot of the Nitro guys came early this morning, so not too familiar who they are. So, I do apologize for that. Just, uh, sorry guys, just uh, <laughs> trying to book my best seat back home. I do have a long flight home after this. So, not too fussed about it. I should get some good sleep on the way home. And it looks like I got a pretty good flight here. James next to me, who did an excellent edit, which took up about six hours of his time of fully focused editing yesterday, with me jabbering away, and he did a very good job, check it out, RC Racing TV. Mm -hmm. 
What brand of coffee? I, you know what? What's up, Dwayne Billings? I hope you didn't leave your coffee with your uh, wife this time. I don't know what type of brand it is, man. It's Portuguese coffee. It's strong. Mm -hmm. I really you drink mm -hmm. black coffee. Mm -hmm. It's actually not too bad. It's not too bitter. Mm -hmm. After staying up to mm -hmm. 2 o'clock mm -hmm. and then being up at 6.30, uh, I need my coffee today. Mm -hmm. I am the top serpent driver. But you're not here, Cass. Unfortunately, you are not here. All right, so there you see our second practice session is over with and the track is drying already have the sun coming down on it and we got a slight breeze <clears throat> we're gonna probably see people taking off their hoodies and jackets there's an overhead shot from the, tr the facility that we're at it's absolutely beautiful here so always good to see I don't know what unfortunately I can't translate what our driver is saying uh, RD is saying I can't hear him that good. I do want to thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to share this. And if you haven't subbed to this channel, please do, because let's help our friends at... We will have the first... Final of Let's help our friends at Fiverr. Are ready? Please remember you need to come a bit earlier to check your battery. Ooh, voltage. so we're going to have our first final, it sounds like. You must be ready oh, okay. So I'll just talk to you guys for the next half an hour. All right, so he's going quiet there. It, Ken Calhoun, it is 11.47 a.m. here this morning, man. How are you? Dwayne says, no, I got, I was up ready for this. <laughs> Keep you up, Dwayne, man. Did you, did you talk to uh, Brady? Let him know how I felt. And tell him I said, congratulations on getting two new Reds engines. That's my boy, Brady Bell, up in the Pacific Northwest. It was good to see him finally meet him at AMS last year. Good to see you, Dwayne. Hopefully, I'll see you guys again this year at one of the races. There's our RD, Pedro, having a look at the track. I'm going to have to probably clean the cars. Yeah, so I... Uh, So, you're going to give the driver some time to clean their cars after getting them extremely dirty. Ah, Frito says, I'm watching this and p, &P at the same time. Trust me, I feel your pain. Uh, looking good for p, &P. We're scheduled to see some good racing there. Ryan Mayfield, TQ, Truggy, and, and Nitro Buggy. Jonathan the Fish Wilson, your e-buggy. TQ, a lot of people... May not know who the fish is, but I'm very familiar with the young man from Tennessee. He's an excellent driver. Him and his dad actually race, and I've watched that drive him make impressive leaps and bounds in his driving over the last year or so, as I've gotten to watch him a lot in the southeast, and he's, he's a good driver, and I'm hoping he makes it over to Redavon <coughs> in the 2022, because he did qualify for the Worlds uh, last year at the Nationals that I was at, in a, at the Silver Dollar Raceway. Wow, now that I'm, I'm starting to think about it, I am, I've traveled a lot in the last two years. Oh. Yeah, he put on a freakish time. Yeah, I, so Frito, I actually fell asleep before they, I, I could watch the Nitro Buggy.
finals because it was almost two o'clock and Max was supposed to be up to write the reports. And when I woke up this morning, he, well, I did write some reports and he said, I'll try and stay up for the nitro buggy. And when I woke up, I saw he did no nitro buggy. So I, I had to do that as soon as I woke up. Yeah, but that's, that's Mayfield, man. Mayfield is the type of racer. He's, I think he's learned that he doesn't have to TQ runs. And he can still win these races. But you can never count out the Mayfield. Oh, Ken Calhoun says, I'm watching some racing this morning and painting a crawler body. What type of crawler you got, Ken? I love crawling. As you can tell, I am an RC geek. I love all RC. I don't know about that tether car stuff. Yeah. I like to actually control it. But I guess it's, it's, it's something for everybody. <clears throat> All right, guys. It's my class two comp. It's a ooh. You gotta send me a picture of that. I, I, I'm just not trying to get too deep in the class comp and all that stuff. I kind of like the scale stuff. What I've seen, he is very much up and down. Either he goes all out, smokes everyone, he goes out and stumble around mid pack. Sometimes, uh, I think what we're seeing is just the competition level getting higher, right? And uh, I know after AMS when he won that race, he kind of was very dominant. And I talked to him, and when I interviewed him, he said that was the best. That was the best uh, techno he's had in quite some time. So, or all year, he said actually. So they are. I know that the techno guys have been furiously working on their, on their, uh, their the the buggy. I know they have a new one coming out, so I'm told. So we shall see what happens. Rock and Roller RC. So our first main will be up. Um, do we have a schedule here? Mm -hmm. At uh, twelve fifteen. So in about uh, twenty twenty odd minutes from now, we did start a little bit late because the track was wet from rain. And let's see. Ho hello, hello, folks. I just got back after taking MT Tractor Slash out for the first time, and I am impressed. Awesome, Traxxas Max slash, ooh, that, that I, ooh, I, those do look very nice. Very nice. Oh, uh, yeah, Friedel, you know what? If there's anybody, so all I have to say is the Viking David Ronnefalk starting 12th on the grid at the 2022 If My World Championship in Spain and was battling for second the entire race and almost won that race. If there's anybody that can make its way their way through the back of the pack, it's the Viking. And he'd be extra charged, extra confident, extra motivated. And uh, I, you, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Viking. And I would be very happy if he won. Let's just put it that way. So we shall see. We shall see. First time for him to that race. And I think he's enjoying himself. He, and a good friend of mine, I was talking to Pierre yesterday. And we was having some words about him. And he seems to be doing pretty good out there. So well done to the Viking. Hopefully he can turn that into a, a win. And we shall see. Lots of fast guys. Brandon Rose was fast. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the end here with all these guys.
Let's see what the Viking can do. Lots of people that can race it. I enjoy the racing and scale side of the RC hobby. It's my first contract as I don't get to race much these days with my new work schedule. I, I love the scale side of crawling. I have four. I don't get out enough to do it, to be honest. So, uh, I, I, but I love it. I think it's fun. I did do a one, one, like where are they in Dominican Republic? We have a, actually a pretty big crawling community. Not when I say big, maybe 20, 30 guys. And I went to a, I wouldn't say it was a, yeah, it was a competition, but it was like they made a scale course and my son and I went there and my wife and I have to admit it was, I, I felt the same like trying to carve that line and make it look like it's scale. I felt the same adrenaline as I did when I was racing. So it's awesome. I love it. Big class. There we see, yo, getting their, ba their cars checked. There's Mr. Figueredo checking for over voltage. Let's see what else. They're going to check that these cars slide in and out of the, oh, that would be after the race. So, Jose, the leader of the federation here, a big, big, big shout out to him for g getting me here for the second year in a row. Let's see. Fredo says, now it's time for Sportsman G main. So it's still a long time until Ron Fuck Racing. Yeah, I think uh, they would have had a schedule out there for the pro races. So they won't be very late for her. They do put the pro races uh, at a better time for people to see. Awesome. Tell them. Yeah, my, my next race in the USA, Dwayne, is the North Georgia shootout in about two and a half weeks uh, in Tiger, Georgia. An absolute beautiful venue up in the mountains there. Absolutely can. Nothing like nitro racing. But I do like carpet racing as well. So I had fun. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to get my son into some nitro GT on-road racing there in Dominican Republic. As he's asked me several times to get into racing. We unfortunately do not have an off-road track. So... We shall see. Very happy to hear my son wants a race. He's a gamer, and that seems to cross over pretty well. We have a new entrant. Ooh, he just throws his buggy body over there. No care whatsoever. <clears throat> awesome, awesome service. The track will be open in two minutes. We will have two warm-up blocks, and then we will All right. uh, stop in the grid. Okay, two so warm -up laps, and two warm-up laps, then, stop then they stop and grid up, and then they get ready to go. So we are ready for some racing here at the... 2024 inaugural e-buggy world cup it may not have big big entry counts but it still counts for something so starting in this race we have juan carlos canas starting in front the young man from spain david todd in second joao figueredo in third ricardo montero fourth thomas musso in that corrali car harold sanderoff from israel in six christian villar from spain Carlos Fonseca and Rui Brites, who joins us today for the trip, for the, for the, for the race today. To open the track. Again, you There's Vilar's car. Two warm-up laps and then stop. Two the warm-up laps and then they will grid up. Mandatory race required by IFMAR in order to host the the championships here so uh, next year the championships will be in the b buggy arena in barcelos so if you guys want to see more about b buggy arena you can go check out the 2022 european championships or you can also go check out the nnrc youtube channel where i did a facility walkabout and a track walkabout is an absolutely beautiful facility has a whole history of the european champions world championships which you, I, I, you actually can't even find online anymore uh thanks a big shout out to joao duras who did all of that okay so our racers are ready we got a full full grid we have some volunteer marshals from the local club here hope they didn't have too much cerveza last night because it's gonna be uh 
uh, quite a long day of running after RC cars. As we get ready to get gridded up and get ready for our first A final of the day. Who will take it? Can Juan Carlos Canas take this first win? Can one of the Portuguese drivers challenging him? Will we see the young up and coming racer from Spain, David Todd, who's at the very end in the pro circuit hat? He was very fast yesterday. I was talking to Joao and them guys were like, we need to get some grip, Keenan, we need to get some grip. It's a different track today. So let's see what they do. And there's our starting lineup. We have Spain, Spain, Portugal, France, Israel, Spain, and Portugal. Let me get my scoring up here. So I can give you guys the best coverage possible. Let's go oh yeah, Canis is huge. Y'all is good too, don't get it wrong. 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 2 p.m. Thank you, Ken. That's all East Coast time for you guys out there. So uh, that's what time the races will start in, in the USA. Big shout out to everybody there, all my RC racing family over there in the USA. Uh, and my friends there, the Elite RC production crew, and a big shout out to everybody that's working hard. Race time crew, Live RC, all bringing you guys the coverage. It's a good job. And a big shout out to the RC Racing TV crew that I'm working with here today. My buddy Helder here, who's on the switches. Paolo, who's on the camera. And we're about to get ready and get gridded up here for our first final of the 2024 World Cup race. As we get ready to go, these drivers will go slightly in just a few seconds hello tony rc good day good to meet you ten, this past weekend nine, and the countdown eight, is in 10. Seven, six, let's get five, ready to boogity boogity four. boogity there's the car of juan carlos canas jc3 they're gonna go on the turn here very shortly and they're off and jc3 gets off to a stellar start right behind him the young driver of david todd and behind him y'all figure in that yellow and orange techno as we see want jc3 in that s works car with the j concepts tires rocking that lexan wing Pulling a slight gap as he goes up and over the Dragon's back very smoothly. David Todd has a rear view mirror full of Joao Figueredo and behind him Ricardo Montero. We're not seeing these racers take the chances that they did. And we have an accident in the back of Kerfuffle. It looks like Musso getting the worst of that. But this is all burning well. And Joao tries to jump to the inside of David Todd. And that's going to allow JC3 to pull that gap even more. As it looks like Joao got in a little bit of a kerfuffle with David Todd. All boating well for your current Nitro Buggy European Champion, JC3, who threw down a 33-3 on that first lap. He was the only driver getting into the low 32s yesterday. The track is a little bit different, a little bit more grip, but still slippery as he comes through this quad up and over. And he has got a great lead over David Todd. Just clips that pipe, goes into a four-wheel drive drift. We did see him doing double single yesterday, drifting completely around that 180. And that was a 34-7, slightly slower lap time for Canas just now. So it looks like Todd, the battle is right behind him for Todd, uh, between Todd, Yao, and Ricardo Montero. Let's try and fit, uh, get that if we can, because we have a good battle going on for second right now. As well, we'll find it here in a second for you guys. And there we go. There's Jao Figueredo, who looks like he might have got in front of David Todd. Nope, there's Nope, it's that David Todd. We'll see when they come across the line. I think Todd might have had an accident. And now he has his countrymen. So it's Jao Figaro and Montero and Harold Sanderoff, the Israel, the, the young man from Israel up to fifth and he fourth, sorry, and he is flying. David Todd must have had an accident. Him and Musso are battling it out. Let's stay on this battle between Montero and the X-ray car, that orange and blue car, white wheels. And there we see Jao. In front of him, just making that move of the techno, sliding around the corner. There's Harold ready to uh, capitalize on any mistake. That yellow winged Mugen. Jaw keeping it tight around the pipe. Not worried about trying to catch uh, JC3. JC3 letting these guys battle it out. And there we see, oh, and Montero is right there. I had a talk with Montero. And it looks like we have one car uh, having a DNF, unfortunately. Montero trying to chase down his good countryman of Jao Figueredo. Jao trying to hold him off. And right behind them is Harrow in that red and blue with the yellow wing. David Todd. Oh, Jao gets it wrong. And that's going to allow Sanderoff and Ricardo by 
So Ricardo in that orange and blue car. Now Sandorov currently in third. Zhao with seven minutes left to go. He's going to try and catch him up. Ricardo looking very dialed. Got a good night. Oh, and Zhao just making a mistake over that double going. Uh, just over jumping. Voting well for young Sandorov and Ricardo Montero, a veteran of the Portuguese and Spanish racing scene. He did attend the Euros here back in 2010. So Joao Figueiredo got a lot of work to make up if he wants to catch up his fellow countryman and the young man from Israel. And JC3 has just kind of walked away with this. He's making it a boring race. So we're going to follow second because that's where the race is. There you see JC3 just going through there. He's on a Sunday morning drive. Montero putting a little bit of a gap on young Sandorov. And there we see Jao trying to get back into shape. He has 6 minutes and 25 seconds left to go in this race. Let's see what it was just now. When they came by, it's 1, 2, and 3. Figueredo with a 35, 8. Sandorov with a 35, 6. So lap times uh, have dropped considerably from yesterday where we saw low 33s and even some 32 second laps from JC3. Montero looking very comfortable out there. Sandorov having a slight bobble that's allowing Jao in front of him. Jao trying to get in front of him, or Litos will call him. Litos trying to get in front of him, but Litos looks like he made a mistake just now too. And Sandorov right there. Uh-oh. Now we have a battle for third because we see Musso and David Todd are now chasing down Litos Figueredo in that techno car. JC3 out there on a Sunday morning drive, not worried about anything. So maybe we pick up that battle for third because that looks to be the closest battle on the track. And Figueredo is trying to catch them up. Montero, there's Sandorov. Let's see, I believe uh, Sandorov's in third. There's Figueredo. And right behind him, Thomas Musso, maybe the car of David Todd, I'll know when Touring comes by. Sandorov feeling the pressure of some of the best drivers in Europe. Jao, one of the best drivers in the world, trying to get by young Sandorov. And Sandorov just driving very calm. He'll be very happy with a third place finish if he can finish like this. Musso now is right behind Litos. Sandorov not bowing to the pressure. Litos trying to get in front of him, as you can see. He's pushing that techno to the extreme limits of grip. And there he goes, jumping into the face of that jump. Sandorov just closing the door on Litos as he goes around. Ooh, Litos has a look. Can he make it stick? He's going to go on the inside and no. A great move by Sandorov driving very smoothly and uh, holding his line. And this bird's well. Montero is pulling over. And a muscle move by Figueredo. But Sandorov gets it back. And But eventually Figueredo gets by. Sandorov now going to chase him down. He has become the hunter. He was the hunty. Can he get back? Four minutes and 18 seconds. Or will we see Figueredo get up and catch his countryman Montero? So let's see. Figueredo now still, but he has a rear view mirror full of the young Israeli Sandorov. And now in the mix is the man from Monaco, the Managais, Thomas Musso. Montero is loving this right now. He is in second. Ooh, we see Figueredo just casing that jump. He is definitely, his car is uh, lacking some traction. He's not able to get that forward bike to get up over these jumps like he wants to. Uh, Sandorov's car is looking pretty good. Musso, who did a lot of testing yesterday in that Corrali, he's looking to get on the inside and challenge Figueredo. And Montero out there driving very smoothly, but the man doing the mission right now is JC3. He threw down a 34-2. That's his fastest lap of the race. Sandorov now embroiled in a battle with Musso as Figueredo sets his sights on Montero as he finds his grip, finds his groove as the track is starting to dry out ever so slightly. He's not too far off Montero, to be honest. So maybe he can catch them up and uh, give us a race. We'll stay on Figueredo for a little while because he is on the move. Last time by, Figueredo threw down a 35-8. He's going to have to find some pace because Montero threw down a 35-2. So let's see. Montero comes by. It's going to be 34-8 for Montero. What is Figueredo? This is going to be a much better lap for Figueredo, I think. And it's a 34-9. Still one-tenth off of Montero, so Montero, who didn't have the best qualifying session, uh, was very worried about one section of the track, which I said we're going to call it your pipe, and it is he hasn't touched it all. Right now, we're going to follow our current Nitro Buggy European champion. He also won E Buggy at recently here at the DNC, recently moving to J Concepts. Said he's loving the change, and uh, his tires work exceptionally well over in America. Running that Lexan wing and that S-Works car. The S-Works crew have found something here. 
Uh, stacking up some victories with Brandon Rose and Elliot Boots here this year. And Canas trying to give them a World Cup win. But Montero still out front. Threw down a 35 flat. Figueredo with a 34-6. So Figueredo on the gas. Maybe we can find that battle with one minute and 56 seconds left to go. Can Joao catch up to Figueredo? Uh, I don't know. Figueredo is quite far behind Montero as we watch Montero in that x-ray car. Blue, white, and orange here with his mother and father. We've all been having a good time here. We're all staying in a big area B and b not too far from here. And Montero driving a very smart race. Got into second. Realized he could not... Well, maybe not. I mean, he's not too far off Figueredo now, it looks like. If that was Figueredo in my... Nope, that's... Todd, sorry. I am confused. David Todd making that mistake. Was in the hunt early on in this race, but had to... Uh, looks like he made a mistake off camera. And Nava was able to get back. Montero driving very smooth. Figueredo pushing the issue, trying to catch him up. Let's see what Figueredo, that's a 35 flat for Montero. And Figueredo, another 34-8. So Musso with a 34-8 as well. So as this track dries out, these drivers are throwing down some faster lap times. But don't worry, they have two more races to go. Figueredo though cannot make any mistakes because Musso isn't too far behind them. You're running out of JC3, Ricardo Montero. Giallo Figueredo, Thomas Musso, and Harold Sander off your top five. Ooh, that's very good move by traffic getting out of the way, realizing he was lap traffic and letting the faster races by. 34 seconds left to go. I think we'll get one more lap. But JC3 on tap to get the first win and start his World Cup campaign out with a victory here in A1. And there is JC3 coming around. He'll get one more lap. Let's follow JC3. This might be his victory lap because the other guys are... Yep, there we go. I don't know if Montero will come across again, but this man right here, JC3, who's been on a tear, European champion, had a very good first half of 2023. Uh, did struggle a little bit. I wouldn't say struggle, but uh, did have some epic races between him and Ongaro at the end of 2023. Uh-oh, looks like Musso pulling off early. Oh, no, he's done. All right, so it's going to be JC3 taking the win with a 18, 10, 19. Ricardo Montero, Joao Figueredo, Thomas Musso, David Todd, and young Harrell, who lost it near the end of the track, end of the race, and he will finish in sixth, followed by Christian Vilar, Carlos Fonseca, and Rui Britas. Well done, JC3. Starting out that campaign very well. 17, 9, 45, looks like he didn't finish, but he will take the win. Up next is... Our first heat of Nitro. Looks like it's going to be a qualifier. So qualifier coming up next for the Nitro cars. Well done, Ricardo Montero. Good race for you. Good job. And uh, he'll be happy with that second, I think. And that was, uh, you know, let's see. Can any of these guys get up and challenge JC3? Ken Calhoun, lefty. How can I get an NNRC shirt? Uh, I tell you what. Hopefully next weekend, we'll have them up on the website. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to order them from there. Uh, but I'll be back in the States in about two weeks' time. And if it isn't, I'll just give me your, your details, and uh, I'll show you how to pay, and I'll get it sent out to you. All right. So, whew, that was, uh, besides JC3 running away with it, there was an exciting race in the back. I know that Litos will not be happy about that. He's probably going to go back into the pits and figure out what he needs to do to get that traction that he needs for his car. You can just saw his car was, had a plethora of wheel slip as he tried to accelerate up the face of these jumps. So he definitely needs to find some grip. We were talking about that last night on our drive home. And with this track being very sandy, very pebbly, I guess that's the best word I can use for it. He is definitely uh, looking for that grip. And hopefully he finds it because he's very fast. So we want to see what he can do. All right. 
Ah, what did you guys think of that first A final? No, no real surprises there. We kind of knew that JC3 would kind of walk away and say, hey, a World Cup win is a World Cup win. Not a World Championship, but still looks good on their resume, right, guys? Uh, JC will be happy with that. We saw Jay Concepts was very happy with him taking TQ yesterday. So let's see what the 20-year-old uh, Spaniard can do. Uh, we got the chance to talk. We can converse in Spanish. So as I've gotten to know him over the years, he's awesome. I like him. I've gotten to like him. Fiery. I've seen him get angry too. So uh, it's good. Absolutely free to The race for second and third was nice. Yes, it was. Absolutely. So good job. Litos is gonna. Litos is not gonna be happy about that. I can tell. So he's gonna wanna. He's gonna wanna get there and uh, figure things out. And find some grip. That's what he's searching for. Grip, 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 grip. Our first Nitro qualifier. Let me bring up our schedule here. Rui Matos, ao seu lugar do pistagem. Let's see how the day will develop. Não é porque a pista está aberta. Um minuto e meio para o início da manga. A pista está aberta, início da manga 1. All right, guys, I'm back. Frito says, I just bought myself a 1900 KV Reg Gen 4. I so want the rain to stop. Now, you don't want to don't want to run electrics in the rain, I don't think. So As we hear the nitro cars revving up and getting ready to do some battle here in the RC Coliseum that is the Machinas track here in Guarda, Portugal. Can these nitro cars put on a show? Let's see what type of lap times they're throwing on as well. Let me uh, see if I can get our schedule up and going. As we say in Swinglish, no, I don't think so. You know what? Uh, Hampus and and uh, David's mechanic who was with us. Oh, man. I forgot his name. But they said in Sweden, when you do this, and then you, like, move your head back, it means everything in Swedish. So you just go, and then put your head back. 
So I just constantly did that to Hampus and him every time I saw them. You know what I'm talking about, Friedel? Or x -Tech? Yeah, we try to find the battles in her. Yes, we know that uh, JC3 is probably one of the, if, if not the fastest guy here. And, okay, so I'm going to do that to the next sweetest person I meet. Uh, but, you know, we always try to find the battles because I'm all about finding the exciting racing. And it's not always the guy running away with it. It's, it's a battle for first and second, I mean third. Second and third and fourth. We had a good little battle going on. So we try to entertain. We try to show those guys some love as well. So it looks like our next A final will be up at 1 o'clock according to our schedule. So 1 o'clock for our next A final. And the sun is still out. It's absolutely beautiful. The clouds out. When I say it was foggy this morning, we could not even see those clouds out the back there. I just, the windmills were gone. It was absolutely foggy out there. So, yeah, uh, so it, you just basically, and then, like, nod your head back. So, of course, when you tell me something like that, I'm going to do it all the time. But good to have my, I've, I've met so many nice Swedish people over the years. I met a, a, a bunch in the Dominican Republic. There's a lot, actually a pretty decent Swedish community there. Uh, I worked with a guy in Ecuador from Sweden, obviously. Um, met uh, met Ronafalk and his father and all his friends. Magnus Berglund's been a good friend, a big supporter of the podcast for many years. There's, there's a couple other guys that I've met. I've never been there yet, never been to Scandinavia. I hope to make it there one day and see you guys, beautiful country. I definitely love that, that nice track that we had the 2017 IFMAR World Champ, uh, not IFMAR, EFRA European Championships won. I would love to attend the, uh, the World Championship, uh, sorry, the EFRA Euros at Malmo this year, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Uh, so maybe some virtual commentary I'll be doing. We shall see how it goes. But yeah, thank you guys for joining us as these guys have one, I, I, one practice session. I oh, know they're qualifying. I do apologize. I thought they're practicing. Looks like Nuno Felipe Fierro is going to take the lead here with 20 seconds, 10 seconds left to go. Followed by Hugo Cunha, Felipe Limos, Pedro Martins, and Jose Figueiredo, who didn't start, probably busy working on uh, Joao's car. Nitro cars can throw a little oil down there, help maybe get some of the rubber down on the track. It's gonna be hard. This track is very loose. They usually do glue it, but was not able to glue the track this year. So we will be doing moving cameras for the finals. So don't, you know, we are just putting on a static cam here while I'm here talking to you guys. So this is the time to ask me any questions. So it's going to be Nuno Felipe, Hugo Cunha, Felipe Lemos, Pedro Martins, and no start from Jose, who definitely had me nervous last night driving. Um, and then he says, I'm going to take you for a drive in my rally car next. And I was like, no, you are not. And he says, next night you come here. You should watch Magnus Berglund's video, Profile of Vetlanda. One eight scale off road racing and watch what happens at 142. I will. Uh, Magnus is doing a lot of he's done a lot of filming over here. Long time racer. I think he used to either race boats or event and saw some boat racing. Because I'm an avid RC boat fan. I have too many of them and I want more. Uh, so uh, Magnus and I have become good friends. Connie Swenson of House of RC, another good friend and a big supporter of the podcast, and I try to support House of RC as much as I can. He's a little bit delusional about uh, large scale being the glory, though. So, but it is awesome. I do like large scale. 
da corrida já terminou. Muito obrigado, Sr. Senhor. Fixador, podem sair das cadeiras. Quatro minutos para abrir a pista para a manga. Dois. Eu gosto de dar um eu vou começar, faz favor. All right, up next is our next nitro qualifier. I'm glad to see that the Portuguese racers came out to do some nitro racing with us. It's good to see. Got some noise. Hopefully, it's still early, but almost 12.30. I guess everybody was partying too hard around the neighborhood here, so I guess we'll see more people file in to come watch some racing. I do know they're having some celebrations here as well today, so we'll see if they come over. And watch some of the races. It's always good when it's some spectators out there. You never know who's going to fall in love with RC uh, watching races. And I want to say a big shout out to all of our sponsors that make this possible. They are Rudog EU, S Works, Hot Race Tires, Hobby Wing, and X Ray. Big shout out to the local Portuguese Federation for helping me get out here. Uh, they also providing the cameraman, my buddy Helder and Paolo. We got James Parry from RC Racing TV here doing all the edits. Of course, we have the RC Racing TV crew working behind the scenes over there in the UK. And it is always a pleasure. Make sure to hit that sub, like, notification button on their YouTube channel. Help them get to 100,000 subs. There is over 15 years of pure RC content on their channel. They've been covering major events around the world and all the Afro events for many years. They're a pleasure to work with. Very passionate about their work. Very good at what they do. And always a good time to hang out with them and do some work. And looking forward to seeing them uh, here in a few months, well, five months in Redavon. para abrir a pista serão dois minutos de aquecimento e cinco de qualificação so I'm the funniest thing I've seen in racing was at NXC when a semi-drunk Danish guy came up next to me on the stand, looked at me with the drunk eye, shrugged, drunk eye, shrugged the shoulders, and then smoked me on the track. <laughs> you want to get, well, I'll tell you what, true story before we get started. JQ is the fastest one-handed beer drinking driver I've ever seen. He can drive one-handed while drinking a beer. And he came, when he first came down to the DR, when I first met him in the Dominican Republic, he came down for a race. And he raced, they wanted to race stadium truck. It was a small glue track. He used somebody's controller, a car he's never even touched, and he smoked us all with a stadium truck, driving one hand, and we, we were driving stadium trucks as well. Driving uh, one handed while drinking a beer. I actually have a video of it, and I'm there next to him with my tongue out trying to catch him out. You know, that's I always drive, my tongue hangs, hangs out. And I've seen him do that multiple times, and it's actually his talent. I tell him all the time, I said, You should drive more one handed. You drive, I think you drive better. Some people just drive better under the influence. Thank 
de groot Isto en Tolle Kessingen van Stockholm. De start op de De zonne red is trior, Pinta red is trior, Stalkar Girard nog Pinta red is trior. One beer. Well, don't take too many beers. All right, so we are ready to get started with our second heat of qualifying in Nitro Buggy here. about that. Alright. Just getting my chat all lined up. Sasquatch. Oh, Squatch Chicken. Squatch Chicken. Are you a Sasquatch believer? I am. Yeah, who knows, man. I mean, at the end of the day, we're here to... 99.9% .9 of the guys that do RC racing are doing it for the fun. That small percentage or that one, let's say 99%, that 1% actually does it as a job. And they, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take your racing seriously, but you should definitely enjoy it. And uh, have people enjoy it in different ways. So kudos to him. If that's the way he likes to drive, then he's, doing, he's living his best life. That's RC life. I'm just going to get the Swedish. And there we go. A bottle of wine. Hurricane of Sasquatches. Oh, you have piqued my interest. Much like Sharknado. Alright, so we have Luis Pierre, Vitor Diaz, Pedro Bola Villas. Vitor Sampao, Rui Matos, and Daniel Almeida. It looks like we only got three cars running. Oh, we got a full class out there. Race Speedway. I saw that's big in um in Sweden, Speedway Racing. Never seen that in person, just seen it on, on television. Really, be the race in national sport in Poland. I think it's madness. Again, I, I like it. It looks cool. I, I know nothing about it. Do they have brakes on those bikes? I heard they don't have brakes. I'm not sure. But it's, I just see bikes going sideways and dark around corners. I think that's awesome. 